folks, Exo Rider here. Here I am at BMW Plymouth, and uh, today's test ride is going to be on a 310 GS. This one here. It's only done seven miles, so uh, it's going to take some bedding in that aspect. But uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to this one, and I've got a bit of a history with the 310 GS, and uh, I'll run through that as I ride. And when you get on it, everything feels like it's in the right place. When you start it up, it's got a uh, quite a nice sound to it, a nice tick over sound to it. I have actually test ridden a uh, 310R version of this before, and um, I nearly bought one actually, uh, but for technical reasons and uh, a few issues along the way I didn't. But uh, it reminds me, what, what instantly uh, comes back to me is the suspension on this. For a budget bike, and I don't want to give it any discredit calling it that, but for a, a bike of uh, such a good price, the suspension is absolutely brilliant. really irons out the bumps well. You know, whether you're going over uh, speed bumps or or alike, it does a cracking job. And also that poke as well, it's got a good amount of poke on it. Tell you what, if you're on, a, on the market for a smallish bike, you can't go wrong with this one. The gearbox has got really short, short throws to it. I remember when I test rode the 310R, I didn't have much of a uh, I didn't get any false neutrals or anything like that. It's all pretty good really. Very comfortable seat as well. This one's only done eight miles, so uh, but just bouncing up and down on it. The suspension's really good. Really soft. Such a light friendly bike. Okay, so where are we now? 6,000 RPM, or coming up to 6,000 RPM now, and about 60, 62, I'm starting to get a bit of a buzz now, um, I do need to remind you that this is a brand new bike, so it's not going to be settled in, it probably needs a good blast actually to sort itself out. And now I'm up to 68, the, the vibes are starting to disappear again. Not a lot coming through the pegs, just uh, mainly a little bit through the bars. And yeah, there's a bit more coming through the seat now actually. But it's keeping up with this lot fine. Still got loads more. If you look at my uh, throttle there, that's all. That's keeping it a steady 68. If I want to open up a bit more, I've got all that left. People have said so far that this screen doesn't seem to do a lot. I think I'm going to have to disagree with that. I'm not getting hardly anything. Any kickback at all. Um, another uh, thing that I have heard, actually, on my research of these, is that the the light, and this is a, you know, it's a fair comment, the uh, front light isn't all that good um, and also it does tend to shake around a lot and see it feels it seems to seem like it's loose and he's tightening up somewhere along the line um, I can see exactly what they're saying about it moving around it, uh, that's, uh, it, it does do that but the reason for that is because this is a um, you know, built as an off-roader as well. Uh, well, BMW don't say it is, but actually they have designed it to, to be able to cope with some off-road stuff. Um, and that light moves around because it's on rubber mountings. So it's designed to move around and soften the blow when you're doing harsher stuff to the bike. I reckon it's the smoothest side for a road so far in the 300 class. For a commuter, you don't need anything more than this. The switch gear is nice. It's um, more than what you'd expect for a, a good value bike, as, as this is. It's 
got braided hoses, a uh, single disc on the front, a single disc on the back, and they are vibre as well. And considering this is a new bike, uh, and, and the brakes aren't quite bedded in yet, they actually work very, very well. It's a bit of uh, a bit too much dive, I would say, on heavy braking on the front. Um, but that's a minor point, really. So after riding the 310R, I can uh, categorically say that I do much prefer this one. And that's very on in the in the test ride here, but. Uh, the 310R is still a really good machine um, and I guess it's a bit of a personal choice really. I, I just prefer this, I like the bars being a bit higher, um, I like the bars being back. Um, I feel I could have sort of more fun on this actually, I think the uh, tyres give you a, a really good sense of stability and it's uh, kind of wanting me, it's, it's making me want to take this thing off road. <laughs> You can kind of tell that you've got a big wheel on the front and the back, you know, or on the front, should I say. It's uh, the way it rides. For the tax, for the road tax, uh, it's, uh, I think last time I taxed my CB300R, it was, um, I think it was about £42 or something like that. So uh, very cheap to tax. If you're tossing up between the 300R and this bike, then I can see why you're tossing off in between them because they're both as good as each other. That's, that's the fact of it. They both got their quirky points. They both got their you know some bits are good you know uh, are better than uh, than the other points. But I mean, just owning a BMW is is a nice thing, isn't it? It certainly feels like uh, you know the the BMW feel, the, the GS feel to it but just a lot lighter. Yeah, there is a lot of dive on the front. But again, you get used to that, don't you? And uh, it is a knee bike, this, so. But over the bumps, lovely. No rattle, no bouncing around. Just soaks the bumps up really, really cleverly well. For me, I personally think um, between a 300 and a 500 cc, I go for 300 every time. People say that 300s are in no man's land when it comes to engine capacity and through my experience now with the 500s and the 300s and I've pretty much uh, ridden, you know, done all the 300s now um, I would say that actually the, the 500 cc's are in no man's land and to me the 300s, including this one go just as well as the, uh, as the 500s but they're cheaper to run. So if I had a choice of a 500 and a 300, I go 300 every time. I've just decided that. Okay folks, walk around time. So this is a 2019 BMW 310 GS. Nice looking bike. And you can tell BMW have had a massive part of it uh, with the quality of the finish which is exceptionally good and exactly what you would expect from a BMW. Uh, one of the things I like about this with my uh, mechanical mind is the way they've put the exhaust at the back of the cylinder head and it drops down back and leaps up back through the exhaust pipe Proper exhaust pipe as well, not one of those little sticky outy things down the bottom. Um, nice chunky thing, and to be frank, if it didn't have that, then the back end would look a bit lost, I think. So, I've got the passenger foot pegs. I can't tell you what it's like to sit on the rear seat, but to me, it's, it's a nice lot of sponge here. And uh, the stock seat for the rider. Is, is okay, you, you sink into it quite a lot, they certainly tried to get that right, um, time would tell if they did or not. The tyres I haven't had any issues with yet, but in all honesty it's been a, quite a nice day today. And they are, I think they're Metzlers I think, off the top of my head, let's have a look, yes, Metzlers. Uh, 
and they're, they're normally pretty good anyway aren't they so BMW say they haven't built this as an off-road bike but they put some nice touches like this uh, rear shock guard here and it's also got a real good quality chunky rear rack so uh, you, you don't have to invest in one of them it's already there we've got LED lights all round so that's the indicators the rear light and brake light obviously it acts as the same thing and uh, we've got indicators on the front don't ask me why they haven't made this headlight that's quite hot actually uh, why have they made the headlight LED um, I think it's something that they should do and upgrade to uh, but maybe that will happen in time and in all honesty yes you might get a slightly brighter light um, but if you need to change the bulb it's not like you have to change the whole uh, whole unit is it for an LED you just change the bulb couple quid job done you see what I mean with this brake pedal here if I put my foot on there you feel like you have to really tip your feet into the engine to be able to reach it but uh, minor detail I'm just trying to give you pros and cons of the whole thing really but the finish you know for the price you pay for this thing is blooming good blooming good and it's just something about it. What I like about the 310 against it's it's like nothing else. You know, you, you don't I don't know how to explain it really, but this sort of engine, it's like an old uh, it's like a Rotax engine. You don't really get this anywhere else. You don't no other bike has the um, exhaust coming out the back, for example. It's got its own unique sound, which is like nothing else. You can get acro acropovic exhaust on these as well if you want them. I don't think I'd bother if it's not really my type of thing to do that really get an aftermarket exhaust um, the looks are subjective for me I have absolute zero issue with it but I, I do know of people that do have issues with the with the look of these bikes but you know it's quirky I like it it's nice to have something different that's exactly what this machine is it is something different I am, but what I can tell you is that I am signed up to the BMW 310 forum and uh, people have done like 40,000 miles on these things and had no issue. Got up mountains and free rivers and all sorts of things. The only thing that I have picked up is that if they're stood around for a while um, then the batteries do tend to go. Um, but tell me a bike that, you know, doesn't do that. Every bike I've ever known doesn't like being sat around, so what's new there? Nothing. And that's what battery optimizers are for, isn't it? So, maintenance wise, seems all good. You've got an oil filter down the bottom, and that seems quite uh, quite simple to change. Um, obviously, you, you want to keep your warranty, so ideally, you wouldn't get your BMW dealers to do it. Optional extras, there are absolutely loads of things you can buy for these, uh, for these bikes. The list is endless. I won't even be able to go into it now. There's so many, so many things you can buy. Um, now, at the moment, you can buy these things uh, with a 5.9. I'm reading off a list now. 5.9% APR, and I don't know how much. I think they're about 5,000. Oh, with a 580 deposit contribution, should I say? Matt's wrote this down for me. Um, and yeah they're about 5200 quid i think and i'll tell you what for what you get for five and five thousand two hundred quid absolute bargain if i've got that wrong then i'll just flash it up on the screen at the end but uh whatever they are absolute bargain in fact it's abs it's it's probably cheaper to buy a new one than what it is a second hand one at the moment with these things but it's a beautiful uh beautifully engineered bike yeah, I'm fed up with it getting such an hard time. It's just, done, it's just uh, totally unwarranted. And the people who normally give it a hard time have no right to, because they've never even ridden one. So uh, I'm sure there'll be people who sort of say, oh, yeah, I've had this problem, that problem. Well, yeah, you crack on. But overall, it's uh, on balance of everything. It's a bloody good bike. Very good. Another thing I want to mention, actually, is with this style bike, people say, well, why has it not got spoked wheels? And I can answer that now, because spoke wheels are an absolute blooming nightmare to keep clean. So, if you're using this as a commuter, um, or, you know, a, a fun day bike, 
Um, I wouldn't want spoke wheels. I much prefer these type of wheels. Cast, cast iron, steel, whatever they are. Um, I much prefer these. I really like this bike. I still like it. Have another go. See what else I can find out about the bike for you. Okay, I hope you can hear this uh, noise here. It's got that lovely smell to it as well. New smell. On. To manoeuvre around, absolute piece of cake. Look at that, that lovely chunky handle there. Can shove it back in the garage and uh, pull it out of the garage. Easy peasy. Lovely. Lovely suspension. If you want to be really picky, you could say it's uh, a bit too soft, but no, get out of town. I like it soft. I want to iron out all I can. Oh, it stands very substantial. Right up, actually. That's another thing that sort of strikes you as you... Ah, oh, lovely, thank you. It strikes you as you're going through. The situational awareness. But they have got the ABS, which you can turn off with this. Which is a nice feature, so if you thought, you know, I mean this is a fun bike anyway, but if you thought to yourself, I'm going to pop out and do a few lanes today, then uh, switch off the old ABS. I don't know what happens, can you do it on the fly? Uh, not too sure. No, you can't. I think you need to be stopped to change it into ABS or non-ABS. really is a premium bike, this. It's unfair to put it up against the other BMWs. A bit like putting my CB300 against a, a Goldwing or something. Of course all the bits on it are going to be nicer. Or, or let's say a CB1000 with all the alum aluminium bits on it and that. It's so unfair. For the price you get for this, you get pound for pound, you get absolutely bag loads of quality. I felt, well, I felt like I haven't felt a single bump in the road at all. It's, uh, the suspension is so soft. Yeah, it's okay. So overall thoughts of this is, uh, as you can probably tell, a perfectly good bike and for the price you get a huge amount of uh, value. Um, gearbox is great, never had any false neutrals. Um, it's nice to ride. Mirrors are good. Light to push around, light to manoeuvre. Corn as well. Sounds good. It's got everything going for it really, in my book. Bits I don't like. Uh, wobbly headlight, it's not LED either. Uh, da, 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 da. What else is there? Tough one, isn't it? It's not really a lot I dislike. Bit buzzy, I suppose, but what do you expect? It's a single cylinder. A bit like saying a, a four-pot machine isn't uh, isn't vibey. You know, it's just totally irrelevant, isn't it? Again, with you, you know, like the uh, like many bikes, you can get the rally raid stuff as well if you really want to spec it up and chuck a load of money at it, but by the time you do that you must have just buy a new bike, haven't you really? Seems a bit pointless to me, but it's alright for the odd thing here and there. Hope I'm going in the right direction. Now it's been an absolute honour to ride this again, so um, if you haven't been down to Ocean BMW Plymouth, it's the first time I've been there today, and to be honest I wish I went there years ago. I, can't, I couldn't believe how big the place was. It's, it's not massive, I don't want to big it up too much, uh, you know, and then you get disappointed, but it's a good old shop that, you know, it's a good, I don't know, 100 bikes maybe, all BMWs of course. Another thing I wanted to mention actually is the nice light clutch, it uh, hasn't got a slipper clutch on these engines, but um, it's very, it's still really light, really nice, nicely positioned, I like where the biting point is, it doesn't sort of chuck you off course any at all. That slow speed maneuverability is absolutely brilliant. Sorry. But yeah, the man maneuverability of this thing is absolutely brilliant. I mean, look at this. Look. No issues at all. I'm going over the white lines. No wibbly wobbly. No tippy turny. It's absolutely brilliant. 
I wasn't expecting that actually, I thought it would be a bit more top heavy, but... Lovely and light. I'm 5'8 with a about 30 inch inseam, and um, I'm not planted, but I'm, I'm stood confident, confidently. Okay, thanks to Matt and, uh, and the crew at Plymouth Ocean BMW Motorrad. I really appreciate you letting me take this bike out.